Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're looking at DxO Photo Lab 4. Now today, I wanted to take a look at the noise reduction options and also give you some examples of the different types of noise reduction that you can do inside of DxO Photo Lab 4. And I'm also going to include some results from using Topaz uh, Denoise AI so you can compare all the different types of noise reductions. I'm gonna give you a link in the description below where you can download and view these uh, files. You're gonna get the actual files of all the different types of noise reduction so you can do pixel peeping side-by-side -side comparisons and I think that's really gonna help you. What we're looking at right now is the actual uh, manual that comes along with uh, DxO Photo Lab and I'll show you how you can open up that manual or download it yourself right from uh, DxO Photo Lab for the program itself. Okay, but I wanna let you know right off the bat the noise reduction types, there's three different types of noise reduction. There's HQ standing for high quality. Now that's in the regular uh, photo lab edition. And then you have the prime noise reduction only found in the elite edition and the deep prime found only in the elite edition. The thing I wanted to point out about these different types of noise reduction is uh, the HQ can be used on basically anything, JPEGs, TIFFs, any kinds of files. But the but the prime and the deep prime will only work on raw files. Now, Topaz Denoise AI will work on any type of file that you give it, whether it be a raw file or a, you know, TIFF, JPEG, whatever. So that that's one thing unique about Topaz Denoise AI. But this noise reduction inside of DxO Photo Lab 4 is quite amazing, especially the Prime and the Deep Prime. I mean, the Deep Prime is amazing. And again, you can download my test results. I have three different images that I'm running it on. Actually, I'm running HQ Prime, Deep Prime, and Topaz uh, Denoise AI. So you can compare all the different um, types of noise reduction. I highly recommend if you have um, Photo Lab any photo lab products, you know, photo lab three, four, whatever, you know, open up the manuals and read them because there's a wealth of information in them. Uh, as I scroll down through here, I'm not going to read all this stuff to you, but you know, noise reduction sliders and settings, it explains all this stuff about the mosaicing, how this stuff works. Um, so there's a wealth of information here and I highly recommend that you go through this information. Let me show you how to uh, download that user guide. So all you need to do is come up here to help and inside of help here, there's a lot of stuff here like DxO Photo Lab Online Help. Download the user guide right here. Click on this. This takes you to the DxO website. You can download the user guide. And as I said, there's a wealth of information in there. There's uh, different things you can do. Keyboard shortcuts in here under the help screen. So check this help menu out. Customer support and resources, DxO Learning Center, Center tutorials, how-to videos, webinars, and so on and so forth. So DxO give you a ton of documentation, but just click on download the user guide PDF, and you'll be able to uh, get that uh, user guide. Very important. What I have for you today are three different images. Now, these are not great images, but I chose images that were very high in ISO. Now, this first image was ISO 2000. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into um, 200% so you can really see it. This is with no noise reduction. As you can see, it looks really bad, right? You see all that color noise. This was a Canon 5D Mark II, by the way. Um, but anyway, you can see all that noise. Now, here it is with the HQ noise reduction, just the basic uh, DxO HQ noise reduction. It does a does a pretty good job on it. Here's DxO Prime. Now, remember, I'm le you know you can download these images and really do the pixel peeping yourself because a lot of times on a you know on a, on a video on YouTube you can't really see the actual results, and I really want you to see the results so you can make a great determination whether this software is right for you or not. Okay, so this is the the Prime HQ uh, noise reduction found in in the Elite Edition. Here's the um, Deep Prime. Okay. You're going to notice more detail in the deep prime. I mean, it's close to prime, but it's definitely better. And then here is the last comparison I use is uh, Topaz Denoise AI. Now stay tuned because I'm going to show you how the uh, denoising tool works inside of Photolab 4. Now here's my next image here. And let's make it full screen. And to make it full screen, see this little uh, cross right here? You just click that. You can do a one-to-one -one preview here. Or if you click this drop down, see where it says 100%, you can go 200%. I like to go 200%, but let's look at it full screen. Here's what it looks like full screen. 
and that's with no noise reduction okay so let's go ahead and zoom into it to 200 percent so i can really show you the noise as you can see this thing is terrible terrible with noise it's got a bunch of dead pixels as well so there's no noise reduction here's the uh HQ reduction found in the normal uh, DxO Photo Lab 4, not the Elite Edition, but it does a great job. It gets rid of all the dead pixels. Let me go to the next one here. This is Prime. As you can see, it's really looking great. Now, mind you, I'm zoomed in 200%. Here's what 100% would look like. It's amazing stuff. The Prime is great. and But then the Deep Prime, it's just over the top. Okay. And I'll zoom out to, let me zoom out to 100% on that one. But it's really good. The color, everything is amazing on it. But that's the deep prime noise reduction. And again, you can pixel peep if you download these files, okay? So here's the last one. This is uh, Topaz Denoise AI. Now remember, this Denoise AI will work on any type of file you throw at it, raw file, TIFF, JPEG. The deep prime and the prime will only work on raw files. But you'll notice I have some dead pixels in this uh, image here. Uh, Topaz does not get rid of dead pixels, but uh, DxO Photo Lab 4 does. Now we come to our last image. Uh, this is just some uh, a sheet of music that I took a picture of, not for a photograph, but just for a test using an ISO of 25,600, just like the last image. And it was only for test purposes. Okay, so pretty much an unusable image. Again, my Canon 5D Mark II. We're zoomed at full screen here. Now let's zoom into uh, 200%. This is no noise reduction, so you can really see it's horrible, right? Just a terrible high ISO image, all that color noise, all the regular luminance noise on there. Here is the uh, DxO HQ. Again, it does it does a really good job, but you can still see some noise in here, the high quality noise reduction. But now we come to the prime noise reduction found in DxO Photo Lab 4 Elite. This is the result we get, and it's fantastic. And now we look at the deep prime found in the new Photo Lab 4 Elite Edition. And lastly, we're going to look at the DxO, or not the DxO, but the Topaz Denoise AI noise reduction. Okay, so that's its result there. Next, I want to show you how I processed my images for all three of my different tests. I'll go ahead and use this skyline image of Pittsburgh, PA. The quickest way to get to the noise reduction tool is to use the new smart menu system and come to the third icon in. That's this guy right here. For detail, click it and all your detail tools will be found inside of here. Now, you'll notice you have three different types of noise reduction you can choose HQ for high quality. That will be found in Photo Lab 4. And then the other two, Prime and Deep Prime, are only found in Photo Lab 4 Elite, the Elite Edition, okay? For my test, I used HQ, Prime, Deep Prime, and also Topaz Denoise AI. And I'll show you how I did them all. So for the first, I used HQ. So I clicked on HQ. Now here's all your settings here. Luminance, chrominance, low frequency, dead pixels, maze, Hey, good news, I never touch these, okay? I always use auto. Whenever you see these little magic wands looking like this, they're in the auto mode. When you click it, you notice it goes up to 100 here and you don't see the little sparkles around the magic wand. So when you click on the magic wand, it puts it in the auto position. And that's what I highly recommend to do. And after you've done that, all you need to do is uh, either export your image to a disk or you could export it to an application, export to Lightroom, to Mail, whatever you want to do. But in my case, I exported it to a disk. All right. So export to a disk. And this dialog comes up. And then you just tell it you want it to be JPEG, TIFF. You get a lot of choices here. I'm not going to go into all this right now. But I exported mine as a TIFF 16-bit. I put them back onto the original folder. This is the resolution I use, 360 DPI. And uh, this is my ICC profile, Profoto RGB export. And they come right back in, all right? I'm not going to do that one. I'm just going to show you how I did the deep prime. So you can actually see how much time it takes. Secondly, I went to the prime. Same deal. Clicked on prime. Didn't do anything here. Just do export to disk. And then you would make sure this is all set up for you. Click export and you're done. And then I went to Deep Prime, so I'm going to click on Deep Prime. Now, notice that you only get two sliders here to choose from. And again, I'm just using Auto here as well. Now, this time, I am going to click Export to Disk and actually export it and actually show you the real time that it takes to export in Deep Prime. So I'll click that. I'm going to click this icon here. 
whoops, I've done this before. It's saying, uh, you've already done this. Uh, what do you want to do? You want to overwrite it? Use unique names. Let me just say use unique names. And now I can click this little icon here and it'll tell me how much time it takes to process it. And it took nine seconds to process that. So that was pretty darn quick. Now I will tell you this. I've noticed that the deep prime is actually faster than the prime. And I use deep prime on every image that I uh, process using PhotoLab 4. And finally, let me show you how I use uh, Topaz Denoise AI noise reduction right from PhotoLab 4. So here's what I need to do. I need to come up to the noise reduction. And right now you notice I'm set for deep prime. I need to shut the noise reduction off. Now watch what happens when I shut this off. That whole noise reduction uh, tool goes away, right? And the reason it does is because I have this toggle switch on for active correction. So if I shut it off, you'll see there's that denoise tool comes back up right there, okay? And you'll notice it is shut off. So I'm applying no noise reduction whatsoever to the image. I don't want to export it to disk. I want to click the icon next to it and choose export to an application. And when I do this dialog comes up and this drop down menu export to, and if you click this, you have different choices here. You can select an application or choose one of these ones that I've used before, but I want to use Topaz Denoise AI, so I'll click on that. And then you can set this up. You know, do you want it to be a TIFF, JPEG, DNG, whatever you want? I usually send it out as a TIFF. But to be honest with you, for the test, I send it out as a TIFF. But I generally wouldn't, on a raw image, use Topaz Denoise AI from PhotoLab 4. I would only use it for images like JPEGs and TIFFs that didn't have noise reduction for some odd reason, okay? And then after you have your dialogue set up the way you want it to be, just go ahead and uh, click uh, export and it will go ahead and send it out to Topaz Denoise AI or whatever application you want it to go to. Well, there you go. PhotoLab 4 noise reduction, HQ Prime, Deep Prime, and I compared it to Topaz Denoise AI. And don't forget, download my examples. They're high-res examples. You can see what the noise reduction does comparing Topaz to uh, Photolab 4's Deep Prime, Prime, and HQ. You can see how they all work, how they stack up one against the other. So you can make an intelligent determination if DxO Photolab 4 is right for you. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!